We symbolize entropy with delta S and Gibbs free energy with delta G. Consider this diagram. The y-axis is delta H, or change in enthalpy, and the x-axis is reaction coordinate. Think of it as progress of the reaction. So we start out at reactants, we go through a transition state, which we symbolize with the double dagger symbol, and we end up at products. Delta H of the reaction is the delta H of the products minus the delta H's of the reactants. And it's a negative number. That means this is an exothermic reaction. And enthalpy favors it. Right, Having a negative delta H is favorable. What about this situation where the products are higher in energy than the reactants? In this case, we've got a delta H that is positive. This is endothermic. This is disfavored by enthalpy. You might be asking yourself, how does this even happen? What is the driving force? This reaction may be driven forward by entropy. An increase in entropy. In other words, delta S of the reaction is greater than zero. So what does it mean to have a positive delta S? Well, you could look up entropy of formation of the reactants and products. Or you could just say delta S is positive when the number of freely moving particles increases. So like in a decomposition reaction, when you have two compounds, sorry, one compound becoming two compounds. It could even be when you have a cyclic compound becomes acyclic. That adds degrees of freedom, like if you had something like uh, this. And it became this. That increases the entropy. What about the total entropy change of the universe? Well, if we break the universe up into two components, the system and its surroundings, we have delta S total equals delta S cis plus delta S of the surroundings. Under the right conditions, we can say delta S of the surroundings equals delta H of the system divided by the temperature. So then if we make the substitution, delta S total equals delta S of the system plus delta H of the system divided by the temperature. Now, why do we care? Something can only happen if, by doing so, it increases the total entropy of the universe. In other words, a reaction is spontaneous when delta S total is positive. And it's non-spontaneous when delta S total is negative. Now, if we multiply each side of this equation by negative T, then we get negative T delta S total equals delta H of the system minus T delta S of the system. And if you're thinking this looks familiar from your Gen Chem 2 class, you're right. 
negative t delta s is delta g. Gibbs free energy. So, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And a reaction is spontaneous when delta G is negative, because that means delta S of the universe is positive. So, delta G less than zero means spontaneous and delta G greater than zero means non-spontaneous. Now consider this reaction. This is called a Diels-Alder cyclization reaction. We've got a diene and a dienophile. And essentially the curved arrows look like this. Pi bond X is a nucleophile, attacks there. That exceeds the octet on this carbon. So this pi bond X is a nucleophile too and attacks there, which exceeds the octet on this carbon. So this pi bond goes here. And you end up with this bicyclic compound. What can we say about delta H? Well, we'd have to know the bond enthalpies, but we can actually estimate whether delta H is positive or negative. And we do that just by saying a sigma bond is stronger than a pi bond. D of a sigma bond, therefore, is greater than D, that is the bond association enthalpy, of a pi bond. So. On the left-hand side of the reaction, we have, we're showing eight sigma bonds and five pi bonds. These are just the ones that we're showing. Don't worry about the hydrogens because they're not going to change. On the right-hand side, we've got 10 sigma bonds and three pi bonds. So that means we made stronger bonds than we started with. Our product will be more stable it'll have a lower delta H than our reactant. So in this case, delta H is negative in the forward direction. So enthalpy favors this reaction. Now we ask ourselves, what about delta S? Is it positive or negative? Well, let's take a look. We start out with two compounds on the left, and we end up with one compound in the products. That's a decrease in number of freely moving particles. That means delta S is also less than zero. So, now we have delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. The delta H is negative. If delta S is also negative, then negative T delta S is positive. So, is this reaction spontaneous or non-spontaneous? The answer is, it's spontaneous when the delta H part of the equation wins. So, that's at low temperature. At low temperature, eventually, the weight of the negative T delta S term becomes smaller than the weight of the delta H term. At high temperature, on the other hand, the entropy part will win and the reaction will become non-spontaneous. Right, so this reaction is spontaneous at low temperature when delta G is negative because delta H wins, and it's delta G is positive at high temperature because the product of T delta S 
becomes larger in magnitude than delta H, and the entropy wins. What would happen if you reverse the reaction? Think about that. I'll give you a hint. You reverse the temperature at which delta G is positive and negative. 